This is the Amanda Seals Show. I'm Amanda Seals, and oh, man, let's get into some Black Heart news. It's just heavy on my heart, Jeremiah. Right, it's heavy right. on my heart. We definitely have some heavy news out of Texas. So a drunk man allegedly slaughtered five people, including an eight-year-old boy. Oh, he was drunk now. Okay, so when this first happened, he wasn't drunk, so now he's drunk. Got it. Including an eight-year-old boy. In so the, it's not the guns. No, it's the liquor. It's the liquor. Oh. Blame mm-hmm. it on a, 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 a alcohol. Got it. Um, in their southeast Texas home, after one of them asked him to stop shooting his rifle outside because their baby was trying to sleep, authority said on Saturday. Then once the people stepped outside to ask him to quiet down, he took offense, walked into their house, and executed them. You looking at me like, Cause can I just, you believe it? I can't because, <laughs> I, I mean, I've read this on a number of pages the family that was living next door, they were Honduran. Uh, the person who did the shooting, uh, he is Mexican. He's a Mexican national. There were about 10 people living in this home, mm-hmm. and uh, he killed uh, five. One of them was an eight-year-old boy. And five of them, five of the other re- residents survived the shooting. Yes. There were a number of kids in this scenario, and they... Sur- oh, my God. Even saying it makes me want to start crying again. And they survived because they were under their mothers. Mm-hmm. So their deceased mothers di- like were protecting them and took bullets. And, you know, this is really not, this is, this is insanity. Yeah. I don't even think insanity is the word at this point. I don't, even, I don't think there's a word that, I mean, you're the You know what the, the insanity part to me is that we're here talking about it and there are people who could change this Mm -hmm. and they are actively speaking about it as if their hands are tied. Mm -hmm. And then there's the NRA who is speaking very boldly and loudly as if this is not a problem. And that's who's tying the hands of those. Well, not they're tying them with money basically, but this is for me as an American taxpaying citizen, I don't know how this story, like, I feel like it's it's surreal, but it's so real. And I know I sound like I'm not making any sense right now because it's nonsensical. We're going to talk later in uh, our our segment in the fourth hour. Politicians say say the the darndest darndest things. things. Where, you know, a congressman, uh, Tim Burchette, he's like, you know, I mean, people want us to do things about it, but I mean, there's just nothing we can do about it. We We just need to pray. Because... That's their literal job. That's literally their job. So, you know, we want to send love out to this family. And I I don't want to send thoughts and prayers because thoughts and prayers are literally the most pointless thing that you can send their way. What I want to figure out is how do we get how do we get politicians in place? Lawmaking. We, we also need to start changing our language. Because we call them politicians, but it's really not. They're not being paid to be political. They're being Mm -hmm. paid to to make laws and to make policy. Mm -hmm. That's where it came from, policy. But they're really just sitting around making up Nicki Minaj bills. And if I see Marjorie Taylor Greene on another podcast, I'm like, when are you working? That is her work, to talk. And and, and I'm saying it facetiously, but like, I feel like those characters in Congress... That's what they got elected to do. That's what their, I don't want to say that's what their constituents wanted, but like the shock value, people bought into the shock value. People bought into the crazy antics and conspiracy theories and they're performing to that base that got them elected, unfortunately. In each of the last three years, I'm going to run some stats for y'all. In each of the last three years, there have been more than 600 mass shootings, almost two a day on average. This is from the Gun Violence Archive. It's a nonprofit research database. One in 20 U.S. adults own at least one AR-15. So that's roughly 16 million people storing roughly 20 million guns designed to, mo- designed to mow down enemies on a battlefield with brutal efficiency. Now, the top 10 civilian-owning countries, uh, and they estimate number of firearms per 100 residents. Yemen at 52.8. Beneath that is Serbia at 39.1, tied with Montenegro. Uruguay at 34.7. You know who's at the top? Tell me, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. America, now remember, Yemen was 52.8. Right. America with 120.5. 
That's the estimated number of firearms per 100 residents. It's crazy out here. So we have to keep talking about this also because people still invoke the argument of it's mental health or we'll never be able to take the guns away, et cetera, et cetera. And as far as I'm concerned at this point, when I hear y'all say things like that, what that says to me is you really don't care about kids because we should just be trying anything. You know, when you have a cold and someone you, it's, you just can't get rid of the cold and mm -hmm. someone tells you like, okay, what you need to do is you need to shave the hair off a frog leg, uh -huh. boil it, pour some orange rind in it. Okay. Stir it around for 5.2 minutes, not a second longer, and then drink it upside down. And you're like, I'll do whatever I can to make this go away. That's how we should be operating right now. We should just be trying whatever we can. And it doesn't have to be forever, but it can at least put a stay in the in the course of the way things are going. No? I agree. But I think also when you get sick long enough, you go to the doctor. It's the doctor's job to revive you or save you. Right now, our doctors, our lawmakers, at lunch. So well, <laughs> they're going to die in the emergency room lobby right now. <sighs> What do you all think? one 855 amanda 8 That's one 262 6328 Give us a call. Let us know your thoughts. I know a lot of y'all are in Texas, so I especially want to hear from you all. And I know that apparently this town is close uh, outside of Houston. So mm -hmm. give us a ring. one 262 6328 When we get back, we got more Black Your News. We're going to be talking about Dwayne Wade leaving Florida.